all this gout this morning. Uh, let me introduce my family that's here first. Zach, you can face that you would stand up here. Uh, Zach is going to sing for us in just a few minutes. Uh, Zach and Paisley, Adrian, and Luke, and Sage and Hadley. How about you guys standing up? This is my great grandchildren here. All right. Don't they look just like a great grandchildren? <laughs> and uh, Tony, you and Lisa stand up. This is Tony, all of you know Tony. I'm not missing a, 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 anybody to be around it. But. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you the program. How about that? How about that? Uh, children. Children painted up for me this morning. I got a special place I teach it. That pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good to be served. Let me show you all this. I don't know about it. It's great. See that? All right. No, he is. He is fed no animals if you think. <laughs> it is it is good to see all of you here this this morning. Uh, I'm gonna speak uh, speaking this morning. Okay. Casey. 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 Good to have you guys here. This is my grandson. His friend. Alright. Let me get that fine. Oh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, this morning I'm going to be in Second Corinthians chapter 13, and I, I'm going to speak to you on the subject, it's always hard to leave. Always hard to leave. And I'm kind of interested in you guys, down, down folks, didn't stay here in this wonderful church. But I'm telling you, God bless y'all with a good preacher. If people come in here this morning. But anyway, it's good to see y'all here. Hey, guys, give me a high five here. How do you do it? Choir member. You did a great job. All right. Anybody else got anything to say before we continue on with the service? Uh, remember, we won't have service tonight, but we're going to have a dinner at work, so we no service tonight. So. I, I was supposed to announce that last week, but I failed to announce it last week. <laughs> So after the service, after the preaching service, we're going to go. Everybody's going to go to the fellowship hall and have a meeting. Yeah. Okay, we want all of you to stay. Amen. Uh, everybody's going <laughs> to go over and share a meeting. Okay, anybody else? Go to the fellowship. Yeah. Four oh, Thank you. Y'all know that you sang just like your granddaddy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank y'all for singing uh, this morning. If you will, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and go down to verse 11. Paul said, Finally, brother, finally, brother, there we Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all forever. Amen. Now, they say that the two most important sermons that a preacher preaches is the first one he preaches and the last one he preaches. If that's the case, I'd better nail this because I got a lot of making up to do. So I had to suffer for the past uh, 17 years and nine months and eight days. <laughs> Third seven. <laughs> Paul was always leaving. Always leaving. Always moving around. That's just the way God designed it. Some of the servants he had. Now some will stay in the same church uh, on and on and on and the membership will, will be there. They'll sit in the same pew. How many have been sitting in the same pew for 10 years? I got my hand up. I've been sitting in the same pew for 17 years. And I, when, when we sang, we shall not be moved, we were very serious about it. But, but that's just that's just a habit. Paul was always leaving. But who knows the mind of God? Who can detect the mind of God? 
Philip was in a great revival at Samaria, but God said, no, I need you somewhere else. I want you to go to all places. I want you to go to the desert. I did a little research, brother. It's got to know how long preachers say. The longest pastor of a Baptist church in modern days is 60 years. That guy has been there 60 years preaching at the same church. The average stay of a Baptist preacher in the church is 40 years. And that's up from two and a half about 10 years ago. Maybe I guess they begin to hang in there. My second pastor was Ray McElhaney. He stayed at uh, Tanner for 50 years. We have a preacher here in our county, Brother Wayne Turner. He's been in speech for 42 years, he told me, last fall. Now, the reason that a weak-minded preacher like me could stay here for the, I don't know about me, 17 years, 17 years, Looks like it's bad to me to leave it. But the past year, is, this is the longest we ever stayed at the church. The longest we ever stayed at the church. You know why? Because of a fantastic church. You know what? If this is a long life for each church, both of all stayed 23 years, it's hardly 23 years. This is the kind of church, Brother Scotty, that, that you can just unpack your bag. Go ahead and unpack your bag. And you can, you can stay here and serve God in this church. You guys ain't got a, you ain't got a clue of what y'all got here. I tell you, it's an absolutely a wonderful and fantastic church. When I was at Faith, Brother Hollis Lee Smith defined my preaching. He said I was a cornbread preacher. <laughs> now, I'm not sure what he meant. I took it as a compliment, but the, as I begin to think about it more, I think he meant it don't take too long to get tired of it. <laughs> First of all, let's look at our scripture. Paul left some desires for the church. I leave you this day with great dreams for you. I know God has sent you a new pastor, and he's going to do fantastic things here at this church. Paul said, there's some things I want you to do. I want you to be perfect. Now, the word perfect don't mean sinless. We, we lose something in the translation. But it means to aim for perfection. Suppose you had an arm broke and you went to a doctor and had it set. Would you want to aim for perfection? What they came in and said, well, I'm going to do the best I can, but I think it's going to be like that. You know, I say, well, wait a minute, doctor. Let me get a, let me get a second opinion here. You want him to aim for perfection, a marksman. He never aims this way or that way. He will aim at the bullseye. So what Paul is saying, I want you to do the best you can in everything you're doing. I want you to be perfect in that and you strive to complete it. Then Paul said, be of good comfort. You know what the word comfort means in Greek? It means to bring alongside. You will meet a lot of people in the world that just simply needs a little kindness. They need you to just bring them alongside. The church is the same, is the same way. We encounter, we encounter many experiences in life that we ourselves, we need to be comforted. Uh, and we need people in that say, need the church to be that for. The church always needs to be there. Then he said, be of one mind. But he don't mean everybody got to have the same political opinion or the same opinion about this or that. What he's talking about is this. Agree with one another. Agree with one another. He's not saying it. We should agree with everything everybody believes. Even the disciples didn't agree with each other. Because every one of those guys wanted to sit at the right hand of Jesus. But yet, though they had that had that uh, diversity of interest, they were of one mind. The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. Now that's the way to be of one mind. Then he said, I want you to live in peace. Live in peace. Now, peace in the Bible is not the absence of conflict 
There will always be some conflict in your life. But let me give you an example of peace. Two artists drew a picture of peace. One drew a peaceful light. The water was not, it was not moving at all. It was just a beautiful sunshiny day. And that was his face of peace. <coughs> Nothing but. The other one painted a picture of a raging waterfall. Just water running and roaring. And back beneath and far back from that waterfall, a tree limb had grown out and a bird had built her nest. And she was sitting on the nest. The waterfall was raging and raging and raging. But here is this little bird has found sleep. There was a guy with her. He was at home. He had a dog named Samson. He was named Samson because he was so big. We had a cat and that cat slept on the dog. <laughs> now that's peace. Right now. You think that all the time I'm not with Samson around, he's not going to bother that cat. Every night that cat just makes herself at home laying on that big old dog. Uh, but here's the thing. Is, you need to have long range in the church. That is, if you see something that might develop into a problem, what is it? Barney called her some Andy Griffin. Nip it in the book. Right there. Then the Bible says, greet one another with a holy kiss. I've been in this church 17 years, 9 months, and 8 days, ain't nobody planning to kiss on you. <laughs> <laughs> that all ended in the 4th century. It was kiss on the cheek, of course. But the dear brethren in the church, of that early church, got to moving their kisses around. And got to select in certain people that they wanted to plan on. So the Diet, that is the, the rules of the early church, said, no, we're going to put that stuff and we're going to start handshaking. So what does it mean to shake somebody's hand? It simply means this. You're important. I, I don't think, uh, I've never been to a church that had a GG committee before. We have a GG committee sitting back there at that door every Sunday. GG means greeting and gossip. <laughs> <laughs> they greet the people and get caught up on different, different things. Here's what God's will is for you. If you do God's will, here's what the Bible says will be the result. For the church. He said, other churches will salute you. What that means is this. Twitter has got one of the best names in this county. I think it's for two reasons. First of all, the quality of the, of the church. And then the church is so old. He's been here for over a hundred years. He stood the test of time. Now, let's walk down memory lane just a little bit. The first Saturday morning I came here was brother with breakfast. And I got out and looked around and I thought, Lord, it hurts. What's the wrong with you? But when I got in that fellow in that brotherhood branch, and it was really in the fellowship hall. The hall back here used to be a fellowship hall it was up to the new building. But I got in there with those nice folks, so I'm telling you, I, Brother Jewel was there, and, uh, and some of the older guys had passed on. And I felt at home. I really felt at home. And when I got here that Sunday morning to preach, I really and truly felt at home there. But I, one thing I've got to remind you of, folks, no matter how many preachers come and go, this is God's church. Amen. It is not my church. It will not be Brother Scotty's church. It is not the biggest church. This is God's church. Now, Scotty, do you remember the youth?
things we had in Tyler County. Yeah. You know, Bill, you made me so mad. Bow man. <laughs> I never happened the whole thing. Now the priesthood is a trap. <laughs> I think these are, these are sympathy cards they gave to you. And vacation Bible school. My goodness, that we had some great vacation Bible school. My goodness alive. Now, of the black community, often some of those children came, and they always had uh, two names. So, you might and I was teaching the eight, nine year old, I guess. And we had two in there. The lit names was Chill and Throw Up. <laughs> so they were very tennis. I mean, they were into this thing. But it come that day we gave the invitation to be saved. They both responded. So we went down to my study. They both accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Isn't that wonderful? A lot of children. We had a lot of children to be saved. But on the way back to my office to the Sunday school room, Chill said, Brother Gordon, will you start calling us brother now? I said, I certainly would, Brother Chip. And Brother Cole, I'm going to say the same to you. So from then on, when they came to church here for a long time, I would call them Brother Chill and Brother Cole. Now, what about the sweetheart names? They, we used to have sweetheart names with you. Uh, we used to kid, we used to kid, uh, Brother, uh, Brother Ben and Brother Dan about getting out and looking for a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they came, they came through for us, didn't they? Sweetheart Dan. Then we built a building out here, the Fellowship Hall, where it's at right now. And then the porch came along. And Brother Dave, Brother, you were a great help on that porch, designing that thing for us. And then the Lord blessed us with three acres of land free right here on the is God blessing this year for? Amen. He is blessed. And last year we got the playground equipment. And let me say a minute, I don't name the ones that's going on. I'm fearful that I might leave somebody. But there's been a great host of God's choice of servants that have served you in heaven. Don't bear it. Bear it. Brother Bud, this is you. I look at y'all and y'all are the mom and the daddy of this show. And now, you can start taking your mom. Brother Jerry, you ain't been here long, brother. But I appreciate you being saved. And I thank God for honoring that. Brother Bud. Of the prison. Well, this is your fine thing. I need to be able to have a state. Young Christian. I love you, man. Brother Scott, you're in the right shirt. I don't have to tell you this. I'm praying for you that God will bless you. Brother Elliot, you're God's wounded warrior right now, aren't you? Amen. But man, you stood the test of time and you've overcome <coughs> the devil's addiction and you've walked with Jesus. Amen. Brother James, you and Miss Floyd just flew in here and was like a fresh, a, a, a breath of fresh air. Thank and y'all been breathing that fresh air ever since you got here. Thank I thank God, God for folks. Miss Sheen, you're an inspiration. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, I saw this young lady <laughs> riding a <her> motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you know how I'm with you. You saw I've saw in the past 17 years, hey, you missed you. Lost a husband, lost a son, two sons. But God was with you, good Lord. Come here. I remember you, my friend, as a football player. At Hatton High School, watched you a lot of times. You was a good boy. And uh, Brother Albert, Mr. Hey, Tracy, let me tell you this. When I've been here, Two or three years, y'all came down and sang, and I thought, God, it would be wonderful if they would come to this church. And one day, we just walked in. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Paul Nichols, thank y'all for coming. Brother. Talk about faithful, faithful servant of the Lord. Brother, thank you for being faithful. And Brother Andy, got five families, six beautiful children. Brother. 
Thank you for letting me call it before it was Now, brother one, now things may get out of hand so I'm living for me now, but me leaving the church. But I picked brother one up at Lane Town, and he rides the church with me, and on the way we straighten all the politics out. <laughs> <laughs> we do that three times a week, but what happens the next morning? Watch it, they're messing with it. But it's in the miscarriage. It was so good to have that. I know you've been through a lot, but since you have stood tall for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For the very mystery. Man, I love you guys. Y'all are ready for me. Amen. Y'all are ready for me. Y'all are ready for me. Christianity. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. 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 We are on New Year's Day. I thank you for being here. Good to have you here. Miss Hart, the mother of our church. Amen. The mother of our church. I've never saw a woman do help for her the way she did. Brother David, thank you. Thank you, Dex. Thank you all for coming today. Miss Carroll, Brother Dex, man, I think Brother Dex sure is one of the most helpful guys. He knows more than anybody asked me. He does. He thinks anybody. I mean, Brother, I wish, along with these other people, we had a thousand of you here at Miss Carroll. I want to thank you for all you've done for me here at this church. Thank you. Wednesday night, when we were talking, one of the things was meekness. And one of the questions was, who is the most meekest person you ever met? We've asked that question before when this couple was here. You know who this is? Brother Theo. First Sunday I was here, Brother Theo said, Man, you're a nice looking guy. I said, Brother Theo, you just saying that comes true. <laughs> coming up here and having our clothes in prayer. Y'all put hands on me and pray. Pretty
thank you for that. I praise you. I love you. Oh, Father God, we come to you in the name of the precious Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh God, for this man that's lived here with us. For the years of service and education that he and Sister Yvonne has put into this church. Father God, you know how faithful they've been and how the people love them and how they've supported them and how they're going to bless them. And Father God, we pray that you will continue to walk with him as he goes forward. Bless him with the, some leisure time with his family, the rest time. Father, we know, Father God, that ours and the time that he's put in in his business and his family and in this service here in this church. And Father God, you know how he loved, how he's going to be best. We just ask you to keep your hand on him. Bless them both in their health, in their family, in their finance, and their spiritual walk with you. And Father God, we praise you and we thank you for our love this morning.